we got invited to Lasertown to run some of the newest and hardest trails in Johnson Valley that's already known for being the nastiest off-road area in the world. I will be the fifth rig to have ever ran them if I can make it. These are by far the hardest and wildest trails I've ever been on to date. Make sure to watch to the end where you see us attempt a four-story waterfall gatekeeper. The stuff these guys are doing are freaking insane, dude. High, high risk. This is big ball stuff. Big balls. This video was made possible by Lasernut, Juicy Whips, and RMI, Reese Mechanical Inc. What's up guys? We're in no other than Johnson Valley and we've been invited to the most off-road official town I've ever seen. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull in here and we're gonna check this out. We made it to Laser Town. We just got through the gates. We just parked. And we're gonna go see what those guys are up to. Bubby, are you okay? Hmm. Are you okay? Okay. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. We're out here on Memorial Day weekend in Johnson Valley. We're especially invited out here to go to Laser Town. And these boys here went and broke a brand new trail. From what I heard, it's super hard. It's called Undecided. It's supposed to be one of the gnarliest new trails on the lineup. We're out here with the guys that broke it. We're going to be the first ones to run it after it's been broke. And we're going to show you exactly how to get there so you can go wheel it too. Just a heads up, Laser Town is privately owned meaning if you don't have an invite or there isn't any open to the public events going on, please be respectful and buzz off. Thank you. All right guys, we are headed out. We're gonna do a trail called Undecided, which we're gonna show you all about. And another one possibly called Uneasy. Phew. Yeah. I just have to say it's super wild to be out at the hammers when King of the Hammers isn't occurring. It's a lot more calm. <laughs> if we can get through the first trail, Undecided, we'd also go and do the second trail called Uneasy. The four cars with me are the original crew who broke these two trails, which are Dennis Large, Jeremy Reese, Cody Wagner, and Craig Allen. These are some of California's best rock crawlers. They broke these trails not only to have new and exciting trails for themselves, but to share and grow with the rock crawling community. That being said, here's a direct route to get to the newest, hardest trails in Johnson Valley. A link will be in the description that will instantly upload this to your Onyx Off-Road app. All right, we made it to the beginning of the trail, undecided. We're all lined up, we're super pumped. Again, this one has only been ran one time and it's by these guys. So you guys are seeing it literally the first time after it's been broken. We're gonna show you where it's at, how to go through it, all the obstacles so you know what to expect and something new you guys can come out here and do yourselves. So, all right, hang on tight, we're getting out there. Here's a map of Undecided. It's 404 yards long with a 160 foot elevation gain. This trail is extremely raw with massive boulder gardens and a few insane waterfalls with everything being loose and unpredictable. Please be advised, this is a rear steer buggy rated trail for experienced drivers. These are the kind of boulders to expect during the beginning of the boulder garden section of this trail. It would be easier to wheel through a garden of Priuses than these nasty boulders. So when you get into this section, there is no right or wrong way through it. There's just getting through it or not. So pick what best works for you and your buggy. Yeah, that looks great. 
It was at this very moment that I realized I had left the other GoPro on my tire at the beginning of the trail. Well, we found it and uh, I ran it over. So pretty freaking lame, but hey, still works. We're gonna work it the rest of this trip. Should be good. First up, we have Dennis Large. Here he is at the most technical spot of the obstacle. He and all the other rigs have portal axles, and the biggest reason for running portal axles is it raises your diff clearance by four inches. That may not seem like much, but looking at the back axle, he is barely clearing the point of that rock. I'm kind of wishing I brought the right caliber rig to have a better shot of this trail. Okay, so what I'm understanding here about this obstacle is you kind of need to come up here and then that way and then up here and then like that. Next up, we've got Craig Allen. He's right about in the middle of this obstacle. You can see that the rear and the front passenger are both trying to climb shelves at the same time. By turning his front driver and working that rear steer, he sniffs out the traction to get the front passenger over that monster boulder. Hey, what do you think of this waterfall? I think it's pretty slippery, but it's yeah. fun. Yeah, it's fun. You got this? I, I don't know, I hope so. <laughs> if he doesn't know, I sure as hell don't know. It looks sketchy as hell. Check this out. It's like way elevated before you get into the rough stuff. And right here, if he messes anything up, it's a big drop backwards. Pretty freaking gnarly. He's pinned on his rear axle right now. Hanging tire. It's pretty freaking wild. I was nervous about this trip. I had good reason to be. This is sick. These guys are legit. Craig puts wings on his passenger front tire and that sucker gets air. Not the best feeling being at the top of such a big obstacle, but being an experienced driver that knows his car, he turns driver while slowly crawling, getting it to settle back down and finishes this obstacle with style. So, I just got done recovering a GoPro that I ran over. The idea was to watch what they did up here, but because I had to run back half the trail to grab the GoPro, I have no idea what they did. So I'm going in this completely blind. This is gonna be sketch, but I'm kind of pumped. Hopefully we get through. If not, I'm gonna call Warren. Help me. We'll see how this goes. I do want to just say that this is still the hammers and all the rocks to move. <laughs>
This is the part that I was most concerned about with not having portal axles. But with Dennis looking out for me and spotting me when I needed it, we were able to get my rear driver's side tire to climb the left side wall, lifting my diff high enough to clear the point on that massive boulder making me the fifth person to complete this obstacle and the first person with a non-portal axle car. Ask me if I'm freaking stoked. First non-portal to make that. You hear that, YouTube? You hear that? Next up is Jeremy Rees. What better unit of measurement to use than him? This obstacle is at least two and a half to three Jeremy Reese's tall. All right, so Bronson got through pretty slick it, he worked at it a little bit but dude not bad i'm super impressed uh we got jeremy next so let's see how he does Are you guys kidding me? Look at that. This is legit. He's here. Look how little Cody Wagner's buggy looks down there. It's because how high it is. This is sketchy. How did that feel? It's a little slippery, man. It's, oh. it's like a long way down. I was watching you in the spot that I was in, and I was like imagining you feeling the way I felt yeah. at that spot. I'm like, dude, don't look back. You don't want to slip that tire in this hole. That's what I was worried about. Yeah, if you look back and you see how far that drop is, it's sketchy. Good job, man. Give Thank it a Thank you. All right, looks like Cody's taking a different line. Never been done before. Super sick. One of the things I love about Cody with Laser Nut, he can't ever leave good enough alone. This dude jumps in here and he's like, I haven't seen anybody do this line yet. I've already done this line. He's jumping in. That's called pushing the limits and always asking for more. This is sick. Trail breaking and breaking new lines, especially huge ones, are the hardest form of rock crawling there is. There are no clues on how to do it and no guarantees that it's able to be driven unassisted. It's a classic mess around and find out. You either make it, break it, or if you're smart, you know when to winch it. So if I keep sliding, it will slide on its side? I think you're caught on your, uh, caught your, your chassis right now. So for now. Yeah, you're anchored right now. Slides that way, does it just stop or does it? I don't think so. It stops upside down. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I know. Or do you want to just put a winch and I just winch that way? We could we could warn plug it. Warn plug it, baby. <laughs> We're gonna warn plug it. <laughs> Come on, folks. <laughs> Hurry up. So these static ropes aren't really supposed to be used for this. In Factor 55, they're always like, stop trying to do rock crawler things with our Overland product. But you know what we use them to? And this thing saves us so much time because we don't have very long winch lines on these buggies. And they work. And uh, yeah, it wor is, if, are we doing it wrong if it works? No, it works? Supposedly it does break down the unit over time. But for us, it's such a useful tool that we'll buy another one because it literally saves us so much time. So we don't care about breaking it down, but just to let you know, it will break down the product over time. <laughs> this is what we do when we rock crawl. We just get by. There's no rules out here. There's no rules, Dennis. No rules. Cody, hey. is there rules in rock crawling? Hey, There's no should rules. We, should no we put rules. the anchor this way? <laughs> Say that again. We got our Factor 55 e brake here. All right, I can't, I can't explain to you guys how important it is to have the right tools on the trail. A wench is just what you have to have because it allows you to push the limits knowing that you have a way out. Yep. 
I also want to state this line has never been done before and it's like soapstone rock. It's super slick and it was a very, very high risk line. Wenching in a situation like this is key. Better safe than sorry. Unless you don't want a wheel next weekend, then, then just send it and then be down for a month. That was wild. That's how you trail break, man. You gotta figure it out. Ten minutes. Yeah. That was probably faster. Jeremy kicked the rock out. Oh. Bronson didn't even have the rock, so. What's your excuse now? This car works weird. How's this? Am I far enough away? That's much better. And you always want to winch in your line from a little bit of a distance, unless you don't want all your digits. Just a quick information drop, kinetic ropes are great in design for momentum tugs. With how they have an elastic stretch, it's able to produce massive energy without jarring vehicles. A few of us rock crawlers use them for that, towing dead rigs back to the trailer, or for winch line extensions. Using them for winch line extensions can cause the rope to lose its elasticity over time and losing its original purpose. We use them for multiple applications due to such limited space in our buggies. Knowing that, we will wear them out quick and will have to replace them frequently. We are heading through the ending rock garden on Undecided. Of course, the further up the trail, the larger the boulders seem to get, making it very technical, challenging, and fun. Not a single dull moment on this trail. It just seems to be a continuous obstacle. Hardcore rock crawling trails are best determined on a 15 scale. Just like a standard one to 10 scale, one being a stock all wheel drive vehicle can do it and a 10 being buggy only. It adds another five levels. 11 would be a moderate buggy trail only. 12 being a hard buggy trail only. And a 13 being an extreme buggy trail only. That only few have finished the trail unassisted. 14 rating, is that the trail has been completed but with only assistance from a winch, helicopter, or any other assistance. And a 15 has not ever been completed, but has the potential with progression of buggies and drivers that it can one day be completed. With all that being said, Undecided is absolutely a 13, being only five buggies have completed the trail at this time. Speaking of 15 trails, we just finished up Undecided and at the top there is a trail that would connect Undecided to Uneasy that's an absolute 15 rated trail. It looks like there's a couple lines that may be possible, but none of us want anything to do with it at this time. That being said, this trail has been called Undoable. One day, this trail, just like the rest, will be driven. And let me tell you, that day will be epic. With new trails like this, there's just so many options that you start seeing with running it more than one time. This is, this is an option that's been looked at. It's so big, probably undoable until proven otherwise, if you guys know what I mean. But pretty, pretty freaking gnarly. And, uh, but you know, every time you go on a trail, you see something you don't think you can do and later on, someone ends up doing it so it's just cool to have all these extra options and it's really cool these guys are out here pushing new trails for 
people like us to go out and wheel it. We head out and take the go around between undecided and uneasy. The bypass is undoable. Undoable is the gap in the map between the orange trail undecided and the green trail uneasy. If you want to exit after undecided, you would go over the mountain to the left down into the next wash called Dead Blow. That will take you to the main two track. I don't have any tracks for it as we continued up to Uneasy, which is honestly one of the hardest trails I've ever done by far, and the most insane gatekeeper I've ever put my eyes on. We will also be dropping a link in the description of this exact trail map that you will instantly be able to download onto your Onyx maps. This trail is rated a 14 and only for highly experienced drivers with capable rear steer rigs. So we're actually breaking this part of the trail. We're trying to extend the trail. So you're actually seeing what it takes to break it. Dennis is over here feeling everything out, trying to figure out what way he can make it through here. Dennis, you nasty. I like it. Last time they ran this trail, there was a very sketchy loose go around, but it was less sketchy than the actual gatekeeper to the trail. Today was the day Dennis and the rest of the crew wanted to officially drive through it, giving me an opportunity with them to break a new section of one of the hardest trails to date. Passing the rear, yep, come back. Come back with it. There you go. I'm gonna show you guys a common denominator. There's not one rig out here without BFGs. So, take it how you want to. Hey, so we're breaking this trail and this, this is totally crazy. And as you know, helmets are an extra safety precaution. Yeah, buddy. Stuff is getting sketchy. Breaking new lines, mega lines. Gotta put that helmet on. So from here you can really see the depth of what they're trying to drive up and it's kind of wild. What do you think of what they're trying to drive up right now? They're crazy. <laughs> I know, right? I don't even see where they're supposed to go after they get there. I don't understand it. <laughs> Dennis got all the way to the top and his tires were almost over, but he made a smart call deciding to winch. With no one up top or bottom to assist if he rolled, it would be a pretty ugly recovery. So he takes one for the team, so that way he could be the recovery rig from up top for the rest of the crew. Now it's Cody Wagner's turn. These guys are crazy. I mean, breaking a trail is so hard because it's not been done, everything is rough, Nothing's been beat down and you have no idea. You're just going and making it happen. It's insane. These guys are sick. The stuff these guys are doing are freaking insane, dude. High, high risk. This is big ball stuff. Big balls. You can really see how massive this almost vertical obstacle is. My buggy is exactly 13 feet in length. Each story in a building is 14 feet. This obstacle is at least four buggy lengths to the bottom. That's almost four freaking stories high. Cody gets the furthest so far, but the breakover on this obstacle is super sharp and completely snags his chassis, stopping his rig from cresting the top. Even with the winch, it's a struggle to get him unsnagged and over the top of this obstacle. Uh, Cody, so what happened there? Oh, it's just another wonderful memorial weekend out here in Johnson Valley. Um, we've actually never done this. Uh, this is like the, we'll call it the gatekeeper for uneasy. Uh, we had to winch. We got really close to the top and then we 
chassis out. But uh, we have some more chassis. fun stuff up here, which is going to be interesting. So, yeah, we're having a good time out here on an easy in Johnson Valley. And this Thanks is for the, coming out, Billy. The trails out here are just not like one big what big dogger and it's done. Like, he just got up that. Now he's lined up on something else. And the guy ahead of him, Dennis, right there, he's also in another bad spot. This stuff is level 10. Super stoked to be out here. It is so big I can't even explain it. You guys see, you guys see how big it is. And I'm like right there, but if I give it extra juice, it's that risk to reward, I'm not gonna be able to wheel the next two days. So I'm gonna pull a line and uh, I'm gonna wheel the next two days. So you tell me who's the winner, huh? Even though I would've liked to get both, you gotta pick your battles. I'll be back for it. It was at this time that we had lost battery on both of our GoPros, and we were only left with the 360 camera. We missed a couple of the massive obstacles right after the gatekeeper, but I was able to get some of the middle of the trail. Of course, due to the 360 overheating, it shut off and missed me running out of talent on an easy obstacle, flopping it on my side. Of course, it was a tricky spot to recover, and it took a little bit longer than we wanted. We ended up spending about an hour getting it back on all fours and scrounging enough motor and trans oil to get it to where we could drive it off the trail. We were able to let the 360 cam cool down enough to get bits and pieces of the last major obstacle. I ended up having to winch so I didn't overwork my trans not knowing if I had enough fluid in it. This was the wildest and most fun trails I've ever done to date. That being said, I'm ready to be off of them. We made it out and heading back to Lasertown. We will also have a link in the description for the route to get back to the lake bed. You can instantly upload it on Onyx with the rest of the trail routes referenced in this video. If you don't already have Onyx maps, we got you covered with a discount code that will be with the map links in the description. Another big thanks to Lasernut, Juicy Whips, and RMI, Reese Mechanical Inc. for making this video possible. Sponsored in part by BF Goodrich Tires, Warren Industries, KC Highlights, and Axle Off-Road Helmets. Best way to support this channel is give that subscribe button a little skiddly do, diddle that notification bell, give this video the fat finger, and leave a dirty little comment below. Rec Gear now has merch and buggy accessories at recgear.com, so don't forget to go spend that money that mama don't know about. As always, thanks for watching.